This tutorial will cover Unity Particles. We will talk about how to adjust color, shape, size, speed, and the sprite which is being displayed by the particle. To create a new particle system in Unity, the first thing we need to do is create an empty game object. And I'm going to name this Particles so I can find it easily in my hierarchy. And then I will add a component. And the component I want to add is Particle System. And by default, it is not using any texture for the sprite that it is rendering. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, under Renderer, and here we can see there is no material selected. So what we can do is create a new material. And instead of the standard shader, I'm going to go ahead and choose from particles and I'll choose additive. And now we need to add a texture here. So I'm gonna use the same circle texture I was using in the last demo, but instead of having the texture type be Sprite 2D and UI, I wanna set this back to default and hit apply. And now it is set to a default texture, but it is still shaped like our circle because it is using transparency. It has alpha is transparency checked. Now back on my particle system, if I scroll down to the renderer section and drop this particle mat into my material slot, and then select this particle mat, and in the texture slot, I'm going to drag my circle. And so now it's using this circle texture that I created. And if you want to make some changes to how that is rendering, we can go ahead and start by changing. I like to start at the top and make adjustments as I go down. So the first thing we might want to change is the duration, the lifetime, and the start speed. If we turn down the start speed, this is how fast the particles are moving when they are first created. The start lifetime is how long each particle lasts before it disappears. So if I turn the start lifetime down and turn the speed up, now I can see how far away each one gets before it disappears. The duration doesn't make a whole lot of difference if I have looping checked, but if I turn off looping and set this to three and hit simulate, now the whole particle system will play for three seconds and then stop. I'm going to go ahead and leave looping checked and I'm going to keep my start lifetime at one and set my start speed to two. Now I have looping checked. If I hit simulate, it will continue to simulate while I'm working. You can also change your start size. You can make them very small or very large. And you can also make the start size random. You can set this to be random between two constants. So I can make it random between one and five. Or maybe I want these to be smaller. So I could do random between 0.1 and one. Or maybe I'll do 0.5. And you can change the start rotation. So I can make them a 90 degree rotation. You can also make this random between two constants. So I could make this between minus 90 and 90. So now each one of these is at a random orientation when it spawns. And you can change your start color. And just as the previous sections, you can change this to be random between two colors. You can make it random between blue and yellow.
and I'm going to go ahead and set this back to a solid color of white so that we can see the, the actual colors of the circle for now. Max particles is also helpful to set so that it, it doesn't hurt the performance of your game. It's a lot of times a good idea to set this down to 200 so that you never have more than 200 particles coming out of your particle system. Now if we go down to emission, here's where we can start adding some fun things. This rate over time is how quickly they're being created. So if we make this 100, now we are creating 100 new particles every second. And we can also, if I set this to zero and add a burst, and you can set the minimum and maximum number of particles in the burst. So I might do 10 to 30. And you can add multiple bursts. And with each one, you can set its variables. And this is at what time the burst happens during the lifetime. So this is during this uh, three second duration. So I could have the first one happen at zero, second one happen at one and the third one happen at two. And I can adjust the number that is being spawned in each of these. So I'll have the first one be five to 10, the second one 10 to 20, and then the third one 20 to 30. So now you can see each burst gets slightly more particles. So the first one just has a few, and the last one has the most. And if you want to remove these, just click the minus to remove each of the bursts. So I'll set this back up to 20 over for my rate over time. And the shape is the shape that they are being spawned. So depending on the type of particle system you want, maybe you want this to be a sphere, so they're all going out in random directions. Or maybe you wanted this to be a box, so they're all going in one direction, and you could rotate this box to be facing down and adjust the shape, the dimensions. So here I can make it look sort of like something is falling. This could be for rain or for snow. And we can change some other things like the velocity over lifetime. And this one is helpful to do curves for these. And if you click on each of these, it lets you edit a specific axis. So if I edit my X axis, this curve will tell it how to adjust the velocity. So I can pick from the, these set defaults at the bottom or I can make my own. If you right click anywhere and add key, you can adjust the curve manually. And now you can see what's happening is over time, the velocity is shifting from left to right. And if you want that to be more extreme, you can change this number here. If I make this five, now you can see they have pretty extreme side to side movement over time. Another helpful one to use is color over lifetime. And the thing that's most useful to do with this, if you click on the color, you have this gradient editor. And the bottom ones are for color, and the top ones are for transparency. And if you click anywhere in the space above or below, you add a new tab, and then you can just drag away to take it off. And I like to set the one in the middle to be fully uh, alpha of 255 and the ones on the end to be an alpha of zero. So instead of popping into existence, the particles fade in and fade out. And you can also change the actual color. So maybe at the beginning, I want them to be red, and towards the end, I want them to be blue. And so now, over time, they change color. And this is a little bit more clear if you increase their lifetime. So now you can see the beginning ones are red and the end ones are blue. 
And you can also adjust where you want it to reach its full alpha. So I might want it to be fully opaque pretty early on, but I also want it to be pretty opaque towards the end as well. So I only want the fade to happen for the very beginning and the very end. It's also a good idea every now and then to hop over to your game window to see how that looks on your camera. You might want to adjust where your particle system is at so that you can see it easily from your camera view. You can also change the size over lifetime. Here it is continuously increasing and perhaps I want this to be continually decreasing. So it's largest at the top and they get smaller towards the bottom. And you can also adjust this manually as well. So I could have it smaller in the middle and then large at the beginning and at the end. So here I can see the smallest ones are in the middle. And I'm gonna move this up just a little bit farther so I can see it clearly with the camera. You can also change the rotation over lifetime. This is the rotation of each particle. And then, so if you watch one individual particle, you can see how it rotates. It's easier to tell this if you turn off the start rotation randomness. So now you can see how each one is rotating as it goes through its life cycle. So I'll set this back to random. You can also add trails and by default, it does not have a trail material. To add that, you'll want to go down to renderer once again, where we added our original particle material. And you can use the same one for this or you can create a new one specifically for the trails. But you can get a lot of interesting effects from using the trails. The trail properties can also be edited. So you could have the width over trail, if you bring this down, now they're smaller in width than the actual particle. And you can adjust the lifetime of the trail if you don't want it to live for as long as your particle system. Now you can see that it's just for part of their lifetime. And the one other thing that you can do with particle systems is you can adjust the actual sprites over time. And to do that, I'm going to bring in some standard assets. So if you go to assets and import package, Unity has an entire particle systems package that you can download that has a bunch of pre-made animations that are fun to play with and fun to learn from. But the only thing I actually want to use from this, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the box at the top. So I have unchecked everything. The only thing that I actually want is I want the particle flame lick sheet. This is a sprite sheet that has several different frames of a flame animation. So I'm going to import that. And here it is inside of the standard assets pack. And so I'm going to create a new material. Actually, I'll create this up in assets. I'll create a new material here. And I'll name this flame. And once again, I'm going to choose from the shader instead of standard, I'm going to choose particles and additive. And if you click this select for the texture, you can find your flame lick sheet here. And for the flame animation, I'm going to actually create a new particle system because I don't want the flames to be moving around a whole lot the way these are. So I'm going to create a new empty game object and I'm going to call this flame. And once again, I'll add a particle system component. 
and I'm going to change the shape to be a sphere and I'm going to change my start speed to zero and for my sphere I'm also going to change this radius to 0 0.2 so I don't want them to be moving around a whole lot. I want them to be basically right on top of each other. And now for the renderer, I'm going to drag in this flame material that I made. And you can see it actually has all of the frames of the flame animation all at once. So to change that, we can select the texture sheet animation and toggle that open. And now we need to put in how many tiles there are. So if we look at this flame sheet animation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight different frames and they are all along the Y axis. There are none along the X axis. So X I'll leave as one and Y I will set to eight. And to get a better view of this, I'm going to reduce my emission. So let's change that to 0.2. So now we can see each frame of that flame animation. And we might want the frames to actually go a bit faster. And so we can adjust the frame over time. And we might want to adjust the start lifetime for each particle. And actually, let's set this back to linear. And let's just adjust the start lifetime and the rate. So if I have a rate of 2 and a start lifetime of 2 or 1.5, now I can see a little bit of blending between the particle frames. You can also adjust the color over lifetime the way we did before so that the alpha on each end is transparent. That way it will sort of fade between the frames. And we actually may not want fully opaque in the middle either. So I'm going to turn it down the opacity a bit in the middle. And so that it looks like it's sort of drifting upward, we can also change the velocity over lifetime. Actually, instead of velocity over lifetime, Let's change the gravity modifier. If we change this to a positive number, it will look like it's falling. But if we make this a negative number, it will appear to be rising. And we can also adjust the size over lifetime so that it grows. And I'm going to change this the maximum number to 2 and I'm going to change my start value a little bit above 1. And so that's how you work with the sprite sheet animations. And if you want to see both of them happening at once, you can just hit play and you'll see both animations happening at the same time. And that about covers it for particle systems in Unity.